Now, when there was a CEO change and um, you had Jack step down as being the CEO, um, I said yesterday on the show that, and this is something that I didn't want to speak much about because I, I didn't care to. However, if you remember, I did mention that don't be so quick to, yeah, Jack was the co- was a co-founder that was still part of the part of the company, but don't be so convinced that Twitter is going to get worse uh, because everybody set their sights on Jack and thought he was the the big part of the problem when you consider the direction that the company was going. Um, and almost immediately, we have this weird policy. Um, but now again, that this is probably has been a long in the works prior to fucking. I mean, it ain't like they just oh get Jack steps down and then we're gonna implement it. Maybe that wouldn't how it went down, but it's just timing. I'm gonna show you guys something regarding this new policy, and uh, let's try to break it down. Cause still, after reading it, I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Let's uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. So Twitter. Safety mentioned that sharing images is an important part of folks experience on Twitter. People should have a choice in determining whether or not a photo is shared publicly to that end. We are expanding the scope of our private information, information policy. Now, look, I certainly understand. The sharing of photos that are, let's say, detrimental in a like a more criminal sense, right? Um, you got some chick who to expose herself and you didn't share that on like, you know, that's fucked up. But when you read more into this, this isn't what we're dealing with, right? We aren't dealing about, okay, an actual legitimate private person in a private photo being put out there to the public. Um, it's It almost sounds like they're leaving it just intentionally vague so where they can punish folks that are more unfavorable, but let other folks get a pass for doing what is virtually the same thing. Let's continue on. Beginning today, we will not allow the sharing of private media, such as images or videos of private individuals without their consent. Again, what does that mean? Um, It's it's almost intentionally vague. We're going to go through this in a minute. Publishing people's private info is prohibited under the policy as is threatening or incentivizing others to do so. We that's been a thing. That's not that that latter half isn't new. That's always been a thing with Twitter. So they say, let's unpack what this means. And they don't help, by the way. This policy update will curb the misuse of media to harass, intimidate and reveal the identities of private individuals. And you think they end right there. But no, this is always what it's about which disproportionately impacts women, activists, dissidents, and members of minority communities. Oh, poor you folk. They just, I mean, instead of mentioning that, they just should have said non-white men. Or, no, no, or more so, uh, they should have said people that aren't white men. That, that would have been a short way to say that. So again, I understand doxing or something and having that as a policy. I get that. That's not what we're dealing with, though. And you know that this seems to set more aims at the guys like the Project Veritas of the world, right? Which go undercover, um, reveal uh, among a lot of the Twitter guys, handlers, blue check marks, them saying some hypocritical stuff, um, some, uh, some dumb shit, and it gets covered or gets uncovered, rather. Images that show people participating in public events like large scale protests, sporting events would generally not violate this policy. Okay. So if you show people participating in large scale protest, uh, 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 protests and sporting events, that's fine. Or is it <laughs> for more on what not, what is not in violation, read the full policy. That's not good enough. This is what they say and continue going to be clear. We require a first person report of the photo video in question from author from an authorized representative. After we receive the report, that particular media will be reviewed for an enforcement 
action uh, before any enforcement action is taken. Context matters. Our existing uh, private information policy includes many exceptions in order to enable robust reporting and newsworthy events and conversations that are in the public interest. Again, who determines that, Twitter? We would take into consideration whether the image is publicly available and is being covered by journalists or if a particular image uh, and the accompany tweet text adds value to the public discourse is being sh- see what they're doing is basically saying, and I'm going to just cut through the bullshit. And then if you want to, they do have a post up that doesn't help at all. It says that this was the new part that they added media, private individuals. And this is what it says that the following behaviors are not permitted, threatening to publicly expose someone's private information, sharing information that will lead to, or rather that would enable individuals to hack or gain access to someone's private information without their consent. Um, asking for offering a bounty or financial reward in exchange for posting someone's private information. That's what journalists do all the time, by the way, Uh, asking for a bounty or financial reward in exchange for not posting someone's private information, blackmail. So you look at that surface level and you say, yeah, I can, I can see where you're coming from, but that's already been a policy, right? Doxing. Um, But that's not what this is talking about, right? That's not, you know, that's not, and, and they specifically mention that as a CYA in, th- in this tweet, when they talk about we will take into consideration whether the image is publicly available. Again, who determines that? Them. So I could see a situation where, okay, CNN effectively doxes someone. They get a pass. Project Veritas, let's say, uncovers that some medical uh, talking head is a hypocrite and they put that information out there because they went undercover and then they put that information and say, look at this person is saying something and it's newsworthy and they're being a hypocrite and they're talking out the other side of their mouth. But Twitter says, no, 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 that's, um, that's exposing private information or rather you're posting something about a private individual against their consent. And you know, these damn Karens on black blue check. We already saw the, well, I can't remember the blue check Mark Helfer who got mad at defiant L's. For just simply posting a hypocritical tweet, right? Before Trump, or rather when Trump was in office, vaccine's bad. Trump leaves. Biden's now in office. Vaccine mandate's good. And all they do is defying nails all day, just post that. And they're saying, oh, this, this, this needs to be taken down. So you know they're going to abuse that when it makes them look unfavorable. It makes them look like hypocrites. But you know who's going to get the pass? You will not know this, man. You know who's going to get the pass? CNN. ABC, NBC, and uh, so forth. They're going to get a pass when they do the shit. But when actual news is done, when actual journalists uncover, and it's newsworthy shit, we ain't just, and I'm not talking about doxing per se. That's not what we're, I'm of course against that shit. But what we're talking about is leaving something intentionally vague. So what Twitter put this policy out is to say, look, at our own discretion, If we don't like who you're painting or who this paints in a bad light, we'll just fall back on this policy and we'll take it down. That's what that's what they want. This is going to be interesting to see this play out. You just watched a clip from my podcast for Cannon's sake. Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at YouTube.com slash Young 59 and follow us over at Odyssey.com slash at Young 59 If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit ForCanonSake.com. 